You're listening to a live broadcast from Classical 90.5, a Louisville public media station. And welcome to Classical 90.5 in this live broadcast. I'm Daniel Gillum, and today we're here with an early music trio from Bloomington, Indiana. They're called Les Ordinaires. Leela Breithaupt plays Baroque flute, Erica Rubis plays viola de gamba, and David Walker plays Theorbo. We'll talk to these musicians about their instruments and the music a little bit later, uh, but let's hear some music first. We're going to hear movements from Francois Couperin's first royal concert, and we're going to hear them in different parts. So the first two movements, Prelude and Allemande. Please welcome Les Ordinaires to Classical 90.5.
for two movements from the first royal concert of Francois Couperin, played by Les Ordinaires, an uh, early music trio from Bloomington, Indiana. They're in town for a concert tomorrow at St. Luke's Episcopal in Anchorage. I'll tell you more about that later. But uh, we have uh, here at the microphone flutist uh, Lila Breithaupt, who plays the Baroque flute with Les Ordinaires. Uh, I'll have you talk about the flute uh, here in just a minute, but um, tell me about your group and maybe start with this name, Les Ordinaires. What does it mean and how did you uh, come to naming your trio this? Les Ordinaires means the king's ordinaries, the people who worked for the king, providing him music, and they were paid to do this. And this, the king was King Louis XIV of France during the late 17th and early 18th century. This trio was called the Royal Trio with the Orbo and Viola da Gamba and Baroque flute. And we, um, we're playing music that was written of that time period on instruments that are copies of the instruments that would have been performed by the composers for the king. So now this music um, doesn't actually specify what instruments should play the music. Uh, And so ideally you could have maybe any combination of instruments playing this royal concert, right? That's correct. It's called um, Concert Royal because it was composed for the king, so it's a royal concert. And there there was a melody line and a bass line, and it was really up to the instrumentalists and whoever was available to decide what they who was going to be playing and which instruments they would choose to play which lines um hmm. so we were, we're we're happy to have it with our trio <laughs> yeah uh well so now tell us about your instrument we're used to seeing flutes made out of a metallic material but yours is it looks a little different than that yes it, it looks like it's painted black but it's actually <laughs> black wood and in the 18th century it would have been these this top part right here would have been made out of ivory and now it's made out of plastic because ivory is no longer allowed to be used as a material. It's pitched at A392, which is one full step below A440, our concert pitch today. So my lowest note is a low D. And for you, that sounds, if any of you have perfect pitch, that sounds like a low C. Hmm. And so now a modern flute, uh, if you look at a flute closely, they have keys that click up and down. This looks more like a recorder where, you know, we all play the recorder in elementary school. It has those open holes that you have to cover exactly. with your fingers, right? Yes. And this this flute has, it's called the one keyed flute because it only has one key. Um, the It gives us more possibilities and less possibilities, or let's say it gives us different possibilities than a modern flute with many keys. You can do things like shading the holes. You can you can make vibrato with your fingers just by by fluttering your finger over the hole. It changes the pitch and causes it to to create a vibrato. Um, the downside of not having keys is it doesn't play chromatically in tune. So you have what are called forked fingerings, where you skip a hole, and that that enables you to play a flat note or a sharp note, but it's a much weaker sounding. Um, quality, which goes along with the style of music, which is all about inequality. And we'll talk more about that later. Yeah. So we're listening to uh, Les Ordinaires, a group that plays on period instruments, instruments that you would have heard Francois, Francois Couperin's uh, group of band of instruments and musicians playing in the 18th century. Uh, we're going to talk to Erica and David later about their instruments because their instruments are equally as cool looking and have great stories behind them. Uh, but let's hear more from the first royal concert of Francois Couperin. Now we're going to hear the Sarabande and the Gavotte. Please welcome back Les Ordinaires. Thank you. 
to a live broadcast from our performance studio here at Classical 90.5. I'm Daniel Gillum, and we're listening to a trio from Bloomington called Les Ordinaires. And they've just played the Gavotte and the Saraband from the first royal concert by Francois Couperin, uh, written in the early 1700s. As a side note, uh, Louisville was founded about 60 years after this music was written. Uh, this was music written for Louis the Fourteenth, our city named after Louis the Sixteenth. So... <laughs> Um, at the microphone now is Erica Rubis. She plays viola da gamba for the group. Uh, for those of you listening, uh, viola da gamba kind of looks like a cello, and I'm sure, Erica, you get this a lot. You know, is that a yes, cello? Yes, I do. <laughs> and mm-hmm. you say, no, it's not a cello. Well, for our listeners, uh, can you describe maybe the difference between the cello and the viola da gamba? Sure. Um, it has a very similar s- shape to the cello, as you can see. Or you can't see. <laughs> um, the main differences are that the viola da gamba has frets like a guitar, and the, the neck is a little thinner and it's wide. It's got this, the instrument has six or seven strings, and so um, you have a wider uh, um, array of tuning. So you have possibilities to play chords on the instruments because of the. Uh, the frets and the way it's tuned. It's so, so similar to a guitar. Hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, it seems like a hybrid then between a, maybe mm-hmm. a guitar and a cello. Mm-hmm. It comes um, from a common ancestor with a guitar. And um, it has C-shaped holes rather than F-shaped holes. People notice that. And it has um, it's strung with gut strings. Um, modern cellos are strung with metal strings for the most part. Sometimes people do use gut on their top strings on the cello. Um, and it gives it a, a very different sound from the cello. The gut has a has a warm, intimate sound. It's made for smaller spaces. Um, metal strings are made to fill larger spaces. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, this music, uh, all, all these movements are named after dances of some kind. But do you think when this music was originally performed, people were actually dancing to it, or was it more of a, a concert setting sort of like this today? I hope they were inwardly dancing, but you're, you're right. It, it was composed more for listening than for dancing, although, as you say, they are based on dance movements. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, now, uh, uh, you play the viola da gamba. Uh, but do you play other string instruments that are like the viola da gamba, the cello, for example, or the guitar? Or do you kind of specialize in the viola da gamba? I do specialize now in the viola da gamba, but I, I do play the cello. I started the cello when I was young, and then in college I switched to the viola da gamba uh-huh. um, when I joined the Collegium Musicum. Um, I've dabbled in <laughs> things like vihuela, and I do play a treble version. The viola da gamba has um, a treble and a tenor size. And in fact, when you, if you were to Google viola da gamba, you'd see that there's really not a standard s- size or even a shape. There are a lot of different ways to make the viol. Well, that's Erica Rubis. She plays viola da gamba with Les Ordinaires. They're our guest today in our performance studio playing some music by Francois Couperin. And, uh, to finish the royal concert portion of this broadcast, we're going to hear the jig or jig and the minuet on, uh, and trio. Uh, again, welcome Les Ordinaire playing the music of Francois Couperin on Classical 90.5. <laughs> Thank you. 
You've been listening to the music of Francois Couperin from his first royal concert. This is music from the early 1700s. We heard the final two movements, the gigue and the minuet and trio, played by Les Ordinaires from Bloomington, Indiana, Lila Breithaupt playing Baroque flute, Erica Rubis playing viola da gamba, and now talking to David Walker, who plays the theorbo, this gigantic string instrument that we see in front of us that is taller than you are, I believe. Yes. Uh, now, I'm, David, I'm about 5'9". Okay, so we're looking at a six-foot long, tall instrument. Um, David, this is not your first time here in this space, here at uh, Louisville Public No, Media. this is at least my fourth or fifth time here, but probably the first time would have been sometime in the mid-90s. And not only, not playing the instrument that he plays now, uh, you've been in a band called The Pennies. I was, a, yes, that would have been an electric guitar thing. Uh, ele- uh, from, <laughs> I, I think you were saying mandolin, too. I you think played- I, well, I, I think I was playing classical guitar in a recording that the Louisville Mandolin Orchestra I did see. here. Okay. Um, and you've worked with Jack Ashworth, Jack, a local I've, early music yes, hero. Yes, uh, Jack Ashworth, yeah. uh, the early music professor from the University of Louisville. I, uh, I would not be here today if I hadn't uh, spent many, uh, many years in his uh, studio. So. Fantastic. So now tell us about this uh, instrument called the theorbo. Um, well, look very closely at the radio because there's a lot to look at. <laughs> no, I, I always hate talking about this, uh, you know, without being able to show what it is. There is Basically a picture just, online. You can yeah. yes, uh, if you if you're if you're if you're so uh, inclined to yeah. do look for pictures. But uh, basically, if you can't, it looks like I've uh, taken a neck and stuck it onto a guitar on top of the second neck. So it's a little bit of a sort of a weird hybrid RoboCop looking kind of thing. And, <laughs> um, so I have a short neck for playing chords, you know, like a guitar. Um, and I have a longer neck for playing bass, uh, bass notes, um, which sound sort of like this. Um, and uh, a lot of times people ask me, well, do you ever play those uh, strings? Because I don't actually fret them with my left hand. I hmm. only play them uh, with my right hand thumb. And they're, they're kind of like the, the, the analog of like the pedals on the organ. Mm-hmm. Um, they're mm-hmm. sort of, uh, you know, they're bass notes, but they're not sort of, you don't use them all the time. Um, and you can't always see them being played. But uh, yeah. And so and then with the, uh, with the other part of the instrument, that's when you're playing the chords mm-hmm. and sort of the melodic material mm-hmm. maybe mm-hmm. Uh, in the music. Yeah, yeah. Now, how long have you been playing the, the uh, theorbo? Uh, I think we're not quite to 20 years. Wow. Um, yeah. But yeah, I began it uh, when I was an undergraduate in classical guitar at the University of Louisville uh, mm-hmm. at, a number of years ago. Yeah. Uh, uh, now tell us a little bit about, um, we're going to hear two more pieces before we conclude this broadcast, and you're going to be playing a duet with the viola da gamba, uh, Erica, here. Yes. Uh, tell us about this piece by Marin Marais. Uh, well, we will be playing uh, another Sarabande, um, a slightly different character. Um uh, no, that's sort of a slowish dance uh, mm-hmm. with uh, a lot of uh, fun things happening on the second beat uh, sometimes. And um, Marin Marais was uh, basically kind of the, he was the vile guy in the late eight, late 17th, or early 18th century in uh, France. Um, there were other people, but he was kind of, he was the guy. And he mm-hmm. also was an opera composer and took over the direction of the opera, the, the national opera when... Uh, when uh, uh, Jean-Baptiste Lully died um, mm-hmm. after stabbing himself in the foot. Unfortunate, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, he had a... We, we don't hear his opera music all that much, mm-hmm. but uh, mm-hmm. some of it is really quite spectacular. But yeah, we, we uh, especially hear his viola, da gamba music, his viola music, uh, these days recorded a lot. Yes, a lot. Great. Thank you, David, for talking about your instrument a little bit. And uh, as uh, Leela makes her way back to the microphone to talk about the the air that will conclude today's broadcast, I'll remind you that Les Ordinaire uh, is performing tomorrow at St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Anchorage. The concert starts at 7.30 p.m. You can find out ticket information at lesordinaire.com or through St. Luke's Facebook page, and they're also going to be selling tickets at the door. And maybe before we talk about the air, Leela, if you could just uh, quickly mention your CD uh, that you're working on. I know you've just received a nice grant, and you're kind of working towards your first uh, album, right? Yes, we very, we're very fortunate to have received a grant from the Indiana Arts Commission to support the project that we have coming up, making a CD called Inner Chambers, Royal Court Music of King Louis the Fourteenth, And the... Pro- Part of the program that we're playing uh, this t- tomorrow night at 
St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Anchorage. It comes from the CD program. We're very happy to present it to you. So please come tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah, well, we're very excited to uh, hear your CD when it comes out. Uh, tell us a little bit about this uh, air by Monteclair that you're going to be playing uh, to conclude right, the Right, after, the, after yeah. the Marais, we'll be playing an air called Je sens naître en mon coeur, which means um, I feel in my heart, um, I feel born in my heart. <laughs> and it's a very kind of expressive air and it was meant to be sung Monteclair then said it um, he, he collected a bunch of his own airs to be played on the flute um, the Baroque flute that I have right now he included in the music he wrote the text so that the flutist would be aware of what the sentiment was and then he wrote a, an ornamented version for, to be played after the the sung text which is called a double and so we'll be we'll play, be playing the sung text, and then the double after that. All right. Welcome back, ladies. Les Ordinaire, playing the music of Marine Marais and Monteclair on Classical 90.5.